Hello and welcome to the studio. So I have just spent several hours pre-mixing these inks for my Lino Cut class and I thought I'd make a quick video to tell you why I do that and how I do that. So why do I pre-mix my inks for my students? Is it because I'm a complete control freak who loathes the idea of any ink being wasted? Well, absolutely, yes, that's true. But there are other reasons which are actually better reasons for doing this. So when I'm teaching a class uh, introducing people to lino cut, having premixed colours like this is taking one thing out of the equation. It's one thing less for people to worry about. And I would far rather that they focused on their designing, cutting, and most importantly, how to ink well and creatively than that they were dithering about trying to mix that perfect colour. So it pushes people into action using the inks. The other thing is that if I'm teaching people who are beginners, they often come from a background of maybe painting, or drawing with coloured pencils, where they're used to ascribing a different colour to each little bit of the picture. And the concept of working in layers of colour, where the ink goes over the whole of the image, is quite alien. So having pre-mixed colours that I divide into tones, so I'll have a pale tone range, a mid-tone range, and a dark tone range, means that people can grasp the idea of working in layers of tone and the colour is kind of secondary to that. So it's really helpful for them to understand that a colour is a tone that has to do a job throughout the print rather than, oh, it's blue, it's only doing the sky. So that's another thing about pre-mixing colours. And the other final thing about why I do it is because in my workshops, I encouraged people not to print a matching edition of the same colours, but to experiment and really mix and match colours. And I usually say to people, you can have the majority in tasteful colours if you want, but at least a couple of prints. Go crazy. Choose really random colours. Stick to your bright tonal ranges, but go crazy with the colour. And this gets people out of being too literal and into experimenting. And it's often the craziest colours that are the most successful. So how do I do this? Well, there are a few tips about this if you want to do it. The first one is that if you can use squeezy bottles that dispense the ink rather like tomato ketchup, that's always going to be a bit of a safer option than going for tins uh, where people have to scoop stuff out with palette knives. However wonderful your students, there's always going to be somebody who puts the red knife into the white ink. So these are 150 ml um, cosmetic bottles. I usually find that a full bottle like this is good for several classes. And the other thing is to make sure you can get the lid off and scoop any unused ink back into the pot. If you don't let the students mix the colours, then of course excess ink just goes straight back into the pot. So the other thing to do is to create several colour charts. And this is a bit of old mount board that I've used here. And I've divided the colour chart up into pale tones, mid tones and dark tones to encourage students to think in correct layers. But I've muddled the colours up so that I'm not suggesting a sort of tasteful route that people can take where they maybe go from pale blue right through to dark blue. I like to make them decide which colours are going to go with which as they go. And I've named the colours. This is because people sometimes have trouble telling between the colours on the colour chart and the colours in the pot. If, like me, you are mixing colours up from time to time to time, the colour on the outside of the pot may not match the ink within it. So I give them a name and I also do a band of colour that I can stick around the tube to help people identify it. So what colour range should you mix? Well, yeah, all the usual suspects, but there are a couple of universal truths to this. The first universal truth is that you must have some purple in some form somewhere because people always want to use purple. Uh, 
And the other universal truth is that nobody wants to use orange until you make them use it and then everybody loves orange. So beyond that, what you should really do is focus on colours that you like as an artist because people are going to come to your class because they like your work. So if you are known for your brilliant turquoises and viridian greens and scarlets, that should be reflected in the colours that you mix. These colours kind of reflect my palette. There are lots of greys and stones and earthy colours in that and they're very popular in my workshops. So I hope that little video has explained the colour mixing a little bit and I hope to see you back in the studio before too long. If you've enjoyed this film, please subscribe to the channel. That really helps me and I'll see you again soon.